Go. Okay. All right, cool. Anyway, let me put my mask on and then we'll get you underwater, okay? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. Today we are reviewing a water scooter in the long line of water scooters I review. If you guys haven't seen my other water scooters, I have a playlist I'll have pop up here so you can check that out. But today we are doing the Asiwo, you know, Honda's robot. It kind of sounds like Asimo, but this is with a W. So Asiwo, I, I imagine. We're going to unbox it here. We're going to take it out set it up, show you everything, go out to the beach here in Hawaii, have my family play with it, mount a GoPro up on the front, see what kind of footage we can get, and just have fun with it at the beach. It weighs 6.2 pounds, it goes to a depth of 99 feet, it has a runtime of 30 minutes, and it's got a speed of 1.5 meters per second. There's a selection in there for three speeds. Okay, so right when we get the top off, there is actually like a carrying bag. We'll open that up in just a second. Like a safety fluorescent green. So this thing is going to be very visible in the water. That was the scooter. Then we got this battery. We got the charging stuff up here. And we also got a leash. And that's it. Wow, guys. So this is an extremely bright and visible water scooter. Looks pretty cool. Fairly compact compared to a lot of the rest. Let's just rotate it around here. The design is kind of hydrodynamic where we have a pointed front uh, section here. It does have the name Asiwo TM on there. There's a little GoPro mount right on the front. There's two triggers right here. So you're gonna have to push in both triggers to make it go. Then we have this little battery latch system. And here are the two propellers. Actually, you can take off these propeller cages just by rotating them one way. So I rotated this clockwise, it snapped. And I can take these off for kind of servicing, so that's pretty cool. So this guy is a 24 volt, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. It's got this little uh, seal here around the connector, so when you plug it into the actual unit, the connection is going to be watertight, so you won't have any infiltration in there. And it's just your basic um, kind of standard battery here. It looks like it's probably going to be lithium ion cells all packed away in there. Put the battery in the same kind of shape it has. Push it in so that kind of plugs in, it looks like. And then you can kind of see how these latch in. So you push it and then these hooks come over. Hooks go over the little latches and then you pull these closed and it seems like it just kind of snaps it all into place and snaps it shut. It makes that battery hug right up against the bottom of the unit. And of course, before you put that battery in, there is the charger here. It just has a little charge port. And here is the charging brick with the wall adapter. So we have that little figure eight plug. We'll just plug this in, plug this into our wall. The bag is kind of cool looking. They give you this kind of bag that fits the whole thing in. You can see how it's pretty large. Same color as the water scooter. And it has these little pull strings on the side. So you can put this thing in, pull string it shut. And that's the first I've seen for actual little carry bag that comes with a water scooter. So that's pretty cool. Pretty interesting as well. We have just kind of a bungee leash. I think it's a three meter maximum stretch. This orange color, highly visible in the water as well. And it's kind of like a surfing type of leash or boogie board leash. There we go. So just strapping that leash on and then put this part of course on your wrist if you wanted to have that extra protection uh, for some reason. Usually, I mean, they're not so powerful where you're gonna lose it, but it's just in case, at least you have that option. So that's kind of thoughtful of them putting a leash in the pack. So it looks pretty cool. I wanna get this thing in the charged up and in the water, but I just wanna go over how to operate this. So you're gonna need to press both buttons, it looks like, at the same time. And you can hear those motors going. If we have them pressed, and then you see how I'm leaving this side pressed in and I'm pushing this one. You see how it's, you can hear it going up in speed? And then if we want to go down in speed, you, this is where your left hand is going to be. Medium, low. Won't go anymore. One hand comes off, and in about a second, the whole scooter just stops. So not really any one-handed operation on that. That may be a con for some people. Kind of like that last water scooter I tested, you could use it with just one hand if you wanted to. But this is gonna require two hands unless somehow maybe you strap this 
a one side with uh, the leash, I guess that could be an option. So essentially this is how you're gonna be holding it. So your arms are gonna come in from the back here. And then if you notice, I'm not getting any readings on the battery. This is the battery bar here, battery level. Until I pull both hand, both fingers in, then I can see it's basically probably about 60% charged here. Letting off both fingers and it just turns off. We still have a battery meter for a second. Anyway guys, we wanna see how this thing works at the beach, so I will meet you there. Okay guys, so we're at the beach with the Aussie Wo, and I got my uh, daughter, Sanaya. She's gonna help me demo this today. Cool. Let's have some fun underwater. Let's see how this Aussie Wo actually does. Maybe just give it a little bit of um, throttle and see how it works, like shoots water out of the back. So go ahead and power it on, go. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Anyway, let me put my mask on and then we'll get you underwater, okay? Remember how I showed you to push it, double push? Okay, here we go. Two, two clicks is three speed. Three was way faster. Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. Let's see if it floats. Let it go. Oh, nice. It floats like super, super buoyant. So that's cool. Let's see if we put it all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom, and let's try to float it up. Okay, nice. So like way better than. Some of the other water scooters as far as flotation goes, it's pretty buoyant. So that could be a good thing and maybe even a bad thing in certain situations. But anyway, I'm gonna slap the Osmo Action right here, the one I'm using to film right now. I'm gonna slap it on here and do a little journey over there. We're on Maui and we're gonna do uh, a journey into the reef and try to get some film of some fishes and see how it works and then we'll do a final pros and cons. So that high five for helping me test that so far. Thanks honey, appreciate it.
Okay guys, so what can we say about the Aussie Woe? So pretty awesome. We're going to go run through a pros and cons. And first of all, I will say that uh, out there, don't expect much battery power from this. Uh, they claim it's going to get about 30 minutes of battery power. I was using it a low, medium, and high. Mostly high, I guess, for really chasing fish and trying to get below the surface. Expect maybe, I'd say, like 20 to 30 minutes if you're kind of going through all of the speeds and mainly in maybe medium to high speed. But man, I have to say that this has got to be the best two-handed, you know, kind of lower battery uh, time length scooter I have ever tested yet. And the main reason for that is because of the instantaneous speed switching from these levers. I mean, that's just completely awesome where you can be holding on to it. I haven't seen a system that beats this. I mean, as long as you have both triggers pushed and held down, you want to go faster, you tap the right trigger, let off tap real fast, go to medium speed, high speed. The other way around, you want to slow down, you can either let it off, it shuts off, and once you're back on, both of them, you're back in slow mode. Or when you're in fast speed, just start tapping the left trigger and it goes cycles through medium and low speed. So that's pretty darn awesome. I just noticed it does seem like I lost one of these cages. So that's going to be a little bit of a con there. Maybe I might have slightly nicked a rock or coral or something. I don't think I did, but that thing is gone. You see how that's gone? I'm going to have to take that back, guys. I actually found the grill. It was actually in this bag, I guess. I guess from the beginning, I didn't have this grill on. So <laughs> something you want to watch out for, uh, these grills really easily come off. So if you don't think you're going to be taking them off, maybe put a little bit extra glue on them. Must have been from when I set it down or when we were taking it out of this bag, uh, this thing came off. So I guess that entire trek, I was actually missing one grill. The depth I was going, it was still pretty buoyant. I think I was going down to about 10 to 15 feet max. It does have a really good high power thrust. Of course, you're gonna eat your battery way quicker with that thrust. I think the color is great because it's very, very highly visible. The design looks decent. And so mainly the only two negatives are gonna be the battery life and then also these uh, guards, if they're gonna pop off that easy, that's kind of a negative. One more thing, it seemed like it drained the battery pretty darn low, man. I could go until it was just barely turning the propellers and they're kind of glitching out a little bit and that can't be good for the battery. So I'm gonna have to get home and charge this thing right away. I hope I didn't damage the battery. So maybe um, I'm hoping it has some kind of intelligent battery cut off but it really didn't seem like that was working perfect so maybe something they can work on in the firmware is to make sure this battery is not going to get damaged if you bring it as low as possible but overall impressed guys with the Asiwo like I said this is going to be the best two-handed little mini scooter I have tested yet the best power options and the best thrust within those options and the easiest to use so pretty darn impressed with it if you guys want to check it out, go ahead and check the links in the description. As usual, I have those down there. And I will see you in the next review. Hope you enjoyed it. Aloha. As with everything you put in the salt water, guys, it's like this kind of um, product. You want to definitely rinse it, dunk it in your bathtub, or at least, you know, rinse it off with fresh, wa fresh water if it's been in the salt water. You don't really want your pool to have a super high chlorine, chlorine content if you're doing this because chlorine is hard on plastics and seals and stuff so if you do go in the salt water make sure you do this i think it does have a little bit of uh power left too after sitting in the car ride home so try to turn it on too if you can and just run the motors in fresh water and uh you'll have a lot more longevity on your products like this